Gahande, thanks for joining us. Can you explain, first of all, to us uh, the importance of Mohawks that Mohawk people place on naming their newborns? Well, um, when a child is born, um, it's up to the family and the clan mothers to determine uh, that child's name. And each child is given a unique name that is usually associated with uh, their birth. So um, they hold that name, they carry that name for their entire life until the time that they pass on. And when they pass on, there's actually a ceremony that takes place where the name is taken back and given back to the clan for use by another baby that's, uh, that's coming. So our names are very specific to the individual. They're specific to their birth circumstances. And so they hold a lot of meaning for um, our families and for the individuals that hold them. So tell us what happened recently to you, to your daughter and the unauthorized use of her name. Well, last weekend I, uh, I woke up to uh, a message from my daughter, my oldest daughter, uh, where uh, someone had sent her a message on Instagram, a filmmaker who had written a script where the main character was half Mohawk and was given the name that her of her. So her name is Garnio Kohe. And the, the title of the movie was given the name um, she takes, she holds up the sky, which is not an accurate uh, interpretation of, of that Mohawk name. What is the, so what is the Mohawk she, name? What is it? Like, it mean, her name is, it, it means uh, she takes the sky out of the water. Okay. So, so specifically, that's what it means. Now, that name was given to her by my mother, so her grandmother, her Duda, and uh, a great aunt who has now passed on. And so she was very upset and asked for my assistance in dealing with this problem, with this issue. And I saw it for what it was right away that it, it struck very deeply to the core of myself and the rest of my family members that someone would take someone's name and use it for something. So in this message that had been sent, she had also asked how to say it properly and also asked for more information about Mohawk culture. So, so it was really an affront to our family. Is there a way, I mean, how should, what would be the protocol of, of doing something? If you want, if you're a non-Indigenous artist and you want to use uh, a Mohawk name or something in your work, what's the, what's, is there, is there a right way of doing it? Well, at this point, I would say um, no. There, there wouldn't be any right way to using our language out of context. So. These names are very uh, sacred to the individual. So if you were to ask, uh, I, at most I could probably say, come to our community, ask about our culture, learn who we are, learn about our naming practices, mm -hmm. and begin to understand why they're so important. And I think out of that, they'll begin to understand and uh, perhaps do things differently. Also, it begs, you know, begs question, why are they telling our stories? Mm -hmm. Why we should be the ones telling our stories? Is there a lesson to be learned in all of this? Uh, yes, I would say um, ask. Always ask instead of just presume that these names are there for the taking or our language is there for the taking. In fact, the UNESCO uh, this year, 2019, is the year of world uh, indigenous languages. So this is a good time to start uh, changing how um, people um, are approaching us and approaching our languages mm -hmm. and uh, misrepresenting them and using, misusing them. This is, uh, you, I would say, I would read that you uh, pointed out that A, this should have happened at the beginning of the process, not the process and then coming back to ask questions. Um, is there is there something, are you seeing anything, I know in universities and stuff there seems to be a movement towards uh, doing these, uh, acknowledging some protocols and doing things in a proper way. Are we not seeing that in arts fields quite yet? I think it's lacking in the arts field. Uh, there's a huge movement in universities uh, for, I would say for the last 15, 20 years in universities where students are being taught uh, how to do research ethically. There's the OCAP guidelines um, that we are ask our students to follow, that we have to follow as well, 
pretty strict uh, research protocols and everyone's held accountable. Now, I haven't seen the same thing in um, the arts field. I think there's a lot of misappropriation that goes on and that, that's a, thing, a serious thing that needs to be addressed. Well, hopefully 2019 gives us a little bit of that. Thank you so much for joining us and sharing this story with us. You're very welcome. Ona.